Hello, my name is Keegan Blizzard, and today for my presentation, I will be discussing the Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court case. So what is Brown v. Board of Education? Brown v. Board of Education is one of the most influential trials in the history of the United States that contributed to the Civil Rights Movement and changed the American educational system forever. The case was over whether or not the ruling of separate but equal that had been established by previous, by the previous case of Plessy v. Ferguson was constitutional or not. The previous case had ruled in favor of the Jim Crow laws that kept African Americans from attending white schools and other businesses slash public resources that were deemed whites only. This ruling would stand for 60 years until the 1950s when the civil rights movement began to gain support and many began to challenge segregation of all forms, forms that included things like segregated buses, segregated restaurants, and of course, segregated public schools. The Influence of the Civil Rights Movement Considering the fact that it had been 60 years since separate but equal had been established and many previous cases against it, against the ruling, were denied a fair trial, it was a wonder that Brown v. Board of Education case had finally been accepted for consideration. The main force driving this push for equality in schools was the Civil Rights Movement. Those that took part in this movement wanted to desegregate all aspects of American society so that all people would have the same opportunities. School was especially important to them as better as a better education for African Americans would mean that more opportunities for success would be available to them in their futures. In fact, because there were so many cases being called against segregation in school, it was decided to address them all in the Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court case as a sort of all-in-one case. So, the Civil Rights Movement finally begins to gain traction, and many people are starting to address the issue of segregation. And one of the most predominant issues was education. Education is super important for the futures of many people, as an education can push people to go to college or have more successful lives. And the fact that inherently Af African American schools were given less meant that they were given less opportunities after they had finished their education. So, to many in the Civil Rights Movement, one of the most important battlegrounds was the battle for fair education for all students. So, who was involved in this case and why? The case took place in 1954 when Oliver Brown, pictured here at the right, filed a class action lawsuit against the Board of Education of Kansas because his daughter, Linda Brown, also pictured here, right, was denied entry to an all-whites elementary school. Brown's argument was that separate but equal was not at all equal, as schools for black children did not have as many resources as schools for white children. He also argued that the ruling was unconstitutional, as it violated the 14th Amendment, as no state can, as it states, deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the laws. So, fundamentally, separate but equal is not equal. It just means to keep blacks and whites separated, but because these schools were separated, it did not mean that both schools were receiving fair support, fair supplies, and just overall not fair treatment. Many black schools were given hand-me-down books from white schools, and supplies at black schools were not new or even up to par. Many of the times they would have old chalkboards and broken supplies and generally could not get an education that was nearly sufficient compared to a white child's education. The Court's Decision the Supreme Court were generally split on how they wanted to vote on desegregated schools. Many felt that they could not simply go against the previous ruling from Plessy v. Ferguson. In fact, Chief Justice Fred Benson was adamant about keeping separate but equal and stated that the Plessy verdict should stand. However, Benson passed away before the trial was heard. 
So the United States President, Dwight D. Eisenhower, but then California Governor Earl Warren, who was in favor of desegregation, as the new Chief Justice. He managed to he managed to turn the court's divided opinions on desegregation to be unanimously in favor of it. The final verdict was that segregation in schools was not to be continued as separate but equal was unfair as segregated schools were inherently unequal. This meant that the Plessy verdict was to be struck down and public schools were to be desegregated. African Americans would now be allowed to attend white schools that they had been previously denied access. So, with this new Supreme Court Chief Justice, he felt that desegregation was needed, and he agreed with Brown that separate but equal was not equal. In fact, he stated that it was inherently unequal because of the fact that they were separated. So, after the ruling, it was immediately ordered that the previous Plessy verdict was to be struck down and that every school was to be desegregated. However, this did not mean that things would go over smoothly with everybody. The Desegregation of Schools After it was ruled that schools were to be desegregated, the process of implementing and enforcing this verdict would prove to be controversial. Many across the nation, especially in the Deep South, were very opposed to allowing black students to be around white students. This caused so much outrage that many white parents would protest outside of the schools in which black students would attend and threaten them with violence. One famous case of this is the Little Rock Nine incident in which nine African American students went to Little Rock Central High School which was a predominantly white school. White parents and students alike protested these nine students, which prompted the local authority to have to have to guard them as they entered the school. Their bravery in the face of an angry public has gone on to be one of the most defining moments of the civil rights movement. So, obviously, you have these very opinionated people of the South who are very angry about the thought of desegregated schools. Many of them would begin to protest outside of these schools and threaten violence on these very young people who just simply wanted to attend a school that was predominantly white and have a fair education. And it got so bad that they felt that, that these people needed to be protected. In many cases, some of them were spat on, had garbage thrown at them, and was almost threatened with violence. Even the students, the Little Rock Nine, had stated that while the first day of school generally seen them as being treated fairly kindly, they would say that as their high school careers went on, they were very much bullied, ridiculed, and often judged for every little thing that they did. But they took on this challenge with pride, they faced it bravely, and they proved to many that African American students very much could and would benefit from gaining an education that was fair. The Legacy of Brown v. Board of Education The lasting legacy of the Brown v. Board of Education case is that in today's modern America, all of the achievements of the educational system's progression has this case to thank. It was one of the many victories of the Civil Rights Movement and gave us some of the greatest heroes of the Civil Rights era. The students and parents who fought for the fair and equal education for all have made their marks on American history. The case also laid the groundwork for future movements that would improve American schools, such as IDEA, and other movements that would improve the fair treatment of special education children, as every child, no matter who they are, deserves a fair education. So, to say this case is groundbreaking and that its ruling changed a lot is... An understatement. Segregated schools had been a standard for such a long time that when it, they became desegregated, it changed everything. Teachers now had classrooms full of children of different races. And not only did this open up other arguments for civil rights for other things such as buildings, um, offices, buses, even 
it opened up what else could people change about school? What was some other groups that didn't get fair treatment? One of these groups was special needs children. Many felt that those who need who required special education were not getting the education that they needed, especially not be, by not being allowed, usually, in public school. This case opened up the opportunities for these people to make the same argument that, hey, we also feel that we are being treated unfairly and that we would also like a fair education that doesn't discriminate against us. And so... That is the lasting legacy of Brown v. Board of Education. It changed so much for our education system that it would be almost unrecognizable without it. And it changed much for the better in allowing that every person, no matter who you were, to have a very fair education. Here are my sources, and thank you for listening to my presentation.